<laughs> yeah, baby. What's up YouTube, welcome back to the CBR650R UK channel. Yes, the CBR is very dirty, I have been riding all winter. She's filthy, but she still looks good. Um, to be fair, the car's filthy as well, so both machines need a clean. But we're going to go out on, some, uh, on a little ride today. Um, try out some new equipment, some new cameras, try out some new things, talk about the bike. I'm going to talk about what I like about the bike, what I dislike about the bike, why I chose this bike in the first place. I'm also going to talk about um, the other options that were on the market um, that I was looking at before I picked this bike. Also, got some other things coming up that I'm doing on the bike later on in the year. We're still in January, so loads of time to get stuff done. There's loads coming this way, but um, first let's fire her up. Yep, I need fuel. So first stop, pit stop, fuel, and then we'll get going. So here we are, and I've filled up at the pump. Can actually start my ride now. Just as a uh, side note, I've just used Shell V Power uh, with the E5 99 octane. Obviously your normal unleaded is E10 now, which means there's uh, higher levels of ethanol in the fuel, which I race carts and that can also um, be reflective in that. It's damaging to certain components. So I always still try and get the E5, which does mean I need the 99 octane which I would run anyway because it burns cleaner but be interested to know your thoughts on the E5 and E10 this is probably only for maybe my European or UK subscribers or viewers but drop some comments below let me know what you think and let me know what your thoughts are on the E5 and the E10 it'd be interesting to know no Mr Officer I did not just accelerate beyond the speed limit back there I was perfectly sensible and I will sit behind you like a good boy until you turn off the road that I'm on okay so as we're poodling up the hill now is probably a good time to uh, to talk about the bike a little bit so in the intro I sort of said I was going to talk about the things I've done things I'm going to do why I chose it etc but I didn't mention that I'm probably going to talk about a few things I love about the bike and I really like and I'm probably going to talk about some other things that I dislike or I think can be improved. Now, a lot of my modifications that I've done have been to improve the bike to my taste. So bear that in mind. My taste is not to everyone's taste. And, you know, I don't take offense to anyone's comments because, you know, it's an opinion and everyone's entitled to one of those. And I'm sharing mine with you. So what has he done to that car? It's a monstrosity. So this is a nice quiet place to talk about my bike. I am going to talk to you about the things I don't like about the bike first. And that is not for any particular reason, just because I've decided upon it. So the things I don't like about this bike, I have pretty much changed already or modified away. That is one of them. The fact the traction control is so sensitive that, I mean, the road's not, I wouldn't say slippery. Look, I've got plenty of grip, but you just get on the power and it just wants to interrupt you all the time. And then when it does that, it really sort of, uh, if in my eyes, it makes the bike harder to control. So I'm not saying traction control is a bad thing, but this only has the on, or you hold it and it's off, or you hold it and it's back on. There's no sensitivity or range of uh, traction control that you can apply to the bike and there are on other models in this i guess not price category but in this sort of range of bikes the 600s the 650s the you know the sort of mini sports if you like so that 
interrupts me a lot and because i've been commu commuting on this you know throughout winter and the colder weathers and the damp weather that gets in the way a lot of the time and it is really frustrating but you know i could use just to turn it off but then i think i know it's there for a safety sort of reason but if i turn it off in in certain weathers it you know i'm, I'm definitely going to be spinning the rear up and likely drop it so it can catch you but i just find you need to be able to turn it down so not off just down uh so that's one of the things i don't like um second thing is probably the rear brakes the rear brakes are kind of non-existent in my eyes again due to some of the winter riding or you know uh, the the different climates i'm riding in and weather and wet ground and slippy ground you do need to use the back brake a bit more because you can't just be so heavy on the front now i just find that you get on the back brake and i mean look this is me just in fourth cruising standing on it, it okay it slows you down but it's it's nothing compared to your front brakes apologies so i think they need improving i can you know you can buy aftermarket stuff and i may well do get some brembos or something on there but i think that's kind of a, a bit of a letdown and i know this is not a super sport bike a lot of people refer to this as a super sport bike it is not a super sport bike it's a sports bike definitely um and i've obviously done a few things to it to make that ride a little bit more sporty and enjoyable but it's not a super sport bike people call this a mini fireblade it has less than half the horsepower of a fireblade it is not a mini fireblade it is a cbr 650r and that's what people should buy it for because it's a great bike to be fair i can't really think of any more things that i dislike the the rear number plate or mud guard that huge extended thing when you buy them new that looks absolutely horrendous had to go so i don't like that but that's on pretty much any bike you buy um, and you just go straight out and buy a tail tidy probably the first thing that everyone does so that's gone um so yeah i can't really think of anything else i do like the bike so i'll talk about the things i like on the bike a lot of them are what i have fitted i love the levers from asv fully adjustable they're so comfy you know they look great on the bike you you've got the full flex back the, the other way i i think they've really improved uh, the ride they, they feel lovely on there and if you haven't got a set i'd highly recommend you going out and buying a set I'm not working for ASV and I am not uh, getting paid for this, but uh, they are very good. The quick shifter is something I like on the bike, but again, I've fitted it. So that has really changed the dynamics of this bike and just being able to shift and downshift without using the clutch at all. And just if you are really pinning it somewhere, you know, and having a bit of fun, it's great knocking up and down through the gears does take some getting used to which any of you with a quick shifter on will already know and i'm just you know telling you how to suck eggs but for those of you that have not fitted one or ridden a bike with one you have to have the throttle on for you to upshift and you have to be fully off and shut the throttle for you to downshift which does take some getting used to um but it is it is really good and it has changed the ride completely so another thing i like is the dash the you know it's all digital you have a couple of um different set modes here that you can run through so at the moment i've got my revs up here and i've got my uh, miles per gallon there why i don't know i don't really look at miles per gallon but it was on there anyway um but i i really like this dash i think it's it's simple it's easy to read you've got your gear selector you've got your fuel you've got your revs your temperature and your speed and a time what else do you need people want all these fancy things that is nice clear simple easy to read does the job i like it so another thing i like about the bike is the riding position yes these clip-ons you know here definitely looks a bit bulky maybe brembo to come in the future but the clip-ons are in an easy to reach position you know the, this handle and riding position is perfect there's no weight really on my wrist um I, my knees are in a, a not, i've got really long legs my knees are not bent right up into my chest my feet on the pedals are nice and comfortable it, it's just the whole riding position it is made to suck up the miles i i can see myself you know probably buying more bikes but keeping this just as a an everyday ride to work have some fun pump the miles in do a european trip jump on the bike it's perfect for that it literally is perfect for it none of this 
tucked in a ball position bad back i've ridden this bike for hundreds of miles at a time i picked this up in lincolnshire and i had to ride it all the way back to london uh the first time i jumped on it and it was fine i was absolutely fine no aches no pains great so a quick pit stop i thought it'd be easier to talk you through some of the modifications i've done on the cbr 650r now the one that probably stands out the most uh, compared to the normal 650Rs is the extended side fairings. Now I sort of touched on this in other videos and my video on the install so if you want to see the install and you want to purchase them all the links are in the description. Check out my video on the extended fairing install. But that was uh, mainly for the reason of one I think it completes the bike and I do really think that it looks better with that fitted and again as I said earlier that's my opinion. I'm entitled to those you're entitled to yours <laughs> drop your comments below and let me know what you think but for my wrap it's going to complete the bike so without that obviously i'm going to be missing a hell of a lot of uh, fairing to be wrapped there so that's one of the mods i've done the carbon winglets is another mod i've fitted i think it makes the front look a bit more aggressive haven't fitted them for aerodynamics does absolutely nothing of the sort i just quite like the look of them um the tinted screen from honda this uh, was fitted as part of the sport pack on the bike so when you spec the sport pack from brand new you get the um the double bubble tinted screen you get the rear seat cowl which another mod that i definitely had to fit because i mainly ride by myself and rarely carry a pillion if i do i've obviously got the seat at home that i just one key <coughs> off it comes fit the seat go out for a ride i've obviously removed the rear pegs but they will be going back on if somebody jumps on the back so those are some quick mods obviously things that came with the bike as well and just quick and easy mods that i've done um the exhaust full titanium acropovic h-e-g-e-h-t exhaust sounds great looks great the clearance on it is unbelievable it's now started to go the goldy color um, from the titanium obviously when i fitted it it looked stainless it was that sort of silvery color they do get the heat through them and change in time and that looks great uh, the quick shifter that i was talking about earlier on so the quick shifter as well so this is a great mod, it's all wired in so that as you keep the throttle open, this tells the the bike to shut the throttle, sort of, I don't know technically how it works, um, but it, sh it shuts the throttle for you and allows you to sync the gears and change the gears. I have removed my stock mirrors, my OEM mirrors are gone, and I have the bar in mirrors now, I've only got it fitted on the one side, I wasn't too sure about it. But I've been riding and it's been absolutely fine. Still see perfectly behind me. And actually the shape of this mirror I can see over both shoulders almost. So you get a good view behind you. So quite happy with that. And yeah, I mean I'm really happy with the bike. Oh, tail tidy. Tail tidy. How could I forget? First thing that everybody does. It looks a mess when you buy it brand new. With this huge almost mud guard that comes out to about here. And then the the uh, number plate on there looks horrendous so that has to go there are plans for more things to be done to the bike but all in good time it's early 2022 so lots of time this year to get things done to it but as i said i, I like the look of the bike it's quite aggressive it is sporty it's not super sport it is sporty you can tell from the clip-ons and the peg position but I think it's a great looking bike and as I said even if I buy another bike or more bikes I think I would keep this in the garage just for my daily commutes and just to go out and enjoy riding it and pumping miles into it it's absolutely filthy and needs a clean I'm gonna do a detailing video on this so how to fully clean your bike detail it get in all the nooks and crannies what products to use I'm gonna do that so keep an eye out for that subscribe to the channel hit the bell button get some notifications as and when new videos are dropping there are going to be loads of videos coming in 2022 so keep a look out yeah so that is the modifications i've done to the bike let me know what you think uh let me know what you guys have done and if there's anything i'm missing that you think oh it's a must have because uh I i'd be interested to know so yeah leave leave me some comments below <laughs> Oh, the dog's not happy with the bike. Anti-social behaviour. Get out the car park. You're in a dog car park. You're upsetting all the people in here.
I need to start the engine. Give me a chance. Let me get out. As I said, it is early January 2022. It is absolutely freezing. And what sort of idiot goes out riding in a hoodie and not much else? There goes that traction control again. And I can't even blame it on the power. You can't even say it's got too much power to try and put down. Because it definitely hasn't got too much power to try and put down. It just kicks in too early all the time. Why, I don't know. Sort it out, Honda. Get me some adjustable traction control. Because I fell on my feet with this one when I bought this bike. I, I got a really great deal from Chris Walker in Lincolnshire. Um, he's got a Kawasaki and uh, Ducati dealership up in um, uh, Grantham. A uh, great guy, obviously used to ride British superbikes, world superbikes, Chris the Stalker Walker. So if you want a bike, he's got a huge selection. Go and check him out. He's, uh, he's a really great guy and got some great people working for him. Oh, neutral. There wasn't many bikes for me, really, that I was considering for everyday sporty looking and everyday riding. So there wasn't a huge market for it i mean you guys are all going to be screaming at me in the comments like what about this what about that but for my style of bike the bike i looked like the, the kind of bike i wanted is uh it was kind of a limited market myers so and that's the thing with these hondas you can only get them in the red or the black so whichever one you buy everyone looks the same you pull in a car park and everyone's like oh cbr 650r um, hence the reason I'm getting a wrap. Uh, what is this guy doing? Come on, man. Make your mind up. Get on with it. Yes, it's a busy car, Bob, but get out of the way. Yeah, I'm going. I will be getting the wrap done at Sublime Designs. It will be a one-off custom wrap. Well, nothing will look the same. And, um, yeah, they, those guys do a great job. So go and check those out on Instagram. Sublime Designs there. Unbelievable. They do a lot of race bikes. So it's all, you know, race fairings. And But, yeah, go and check them out. They're absolutely awesome. So I'm just going to pull up here and grab a coffee. So just when you thought you'd seen it all, people from the 1920s have come to the party. Look pretty cool though. Right, let's try and leave inconspicuously without setting any car alarms off, without upsetting any dogs, and without being called an antisocial knobhead on a motorbike. Chances are, I'm going to start this up, people are going to look and call me a knob, but hey. Well, I think that went pretty well. So, stopped off, coffee break done, hands are warm again. Lesson learned, don't wear a hoodie and a pair of jeans in six degrees Celsius. But the main thing is, I'm on a bike, I'm riding, regardless of the weather, I'm out and having fun and enjoying the bike. That is the main thing. So yeah, I don't think there's really much left to talk about. Um, I went through what I like about the bike, I've been through what I don't like about the bike, I went through some of the other options uh, before purchasing this bike, and I uh, guess kind of touched on some future plans of what I'm going to do to the bike. Uh, there will be more videos coming obviously on that, I'm definitely going to do a video at Sublime, so keep an eye out for that. Let's just listen to some uh, engine pops. Yeah, baby that's the thing you can't you can't beat that 
you cannot beat that people buy cars because they want to get from a to b people buy motorbikes because they want to live a little and you just you know you live you live the best life on a bike can't tell people how good it is on a bike yes it's dangerous yes it's cold but who cares when you can open up a bike like that who actually cares I would rather have numb fingers when I get home than get out of a nice toasty car living the dream Okay, that's great. Everyone's just sitting, looking at each other at red lights. No pedestrian crossing. What is that about? Aha, there we go. And the other thing about being on a bike is, have a look at that. You just miss all the traffic. You're in your car, you're nice and toasty, but look. You're sitting with all of these other idiots. Not me. Straight down the middle. Be home in no time. Oh, look, more traffic. Oh, not a bother. So, guys and girls, I hope you liked the video. Uh, just a little insight into uh, into the bike, really. Um, some of the, you guys that follow me probably already have CBRs, which is why you're probably following me. If you don't, I recommend them, they're a great bike, they're not for everyone, if you're looking for a super sport bike then go and buy a super sport bike, don't buy one of these, but if you are looking to do fairly long journeys or be on the bike for fairly long distances and you know all weathers, all sort of types of riding, then this is definitely a bike to consider. There are other bikes on the market but I am going to be biased because I bought one of these but they're, um, they're great bikes. Uh, you can do plenty of modifications to them like I'm doing and have done so far make it your own you know put your own stamp on it and yeah I think these are these are great I really enjoy riding it I'm still not bored of it it's still got enough power for me to just go out and have a little blast and have some fun but if you need to do those motorway miles if you need to commute or do long journeys it ticks that box as well so it's it's kind of a great all-round bike stay there cannot get bored of that straight four sound it's just I don't want to talk so you can hear the bike but <laughs> I'm just smiling inside constantly every time you open it up yes there's a smile on my face and I've got to say, that Acropovic is incredible. I did consider some other exhaust before I fitted that one. I've done a video on it. I've done it to death. I'm not going to talk about it anymore, apart from a tiny little bit in this video. But that exhaust is absolutely incredible. Completely opened up the bike. Just the noise is... Ah, oh man. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to stop talking about Acropovic, but guys i hope you liked it subscribe to the channel there's loads more coming in 2022 i've got so much more content to do i've got so many ideas i just want to share all that with you i do this for you not for me uh and yeah I'm, i enjoy making the videos i enjoy it because i get to go out and ride my bike and you guys just sit in your warm comfy homes and watch me freeze while i'm out riding it's, it's great but roll on the summer months and spring uh, I'll have a few of my boys with me. We'll be doing plenty more videos, lots of content, all sorts of crazy bikes uh, that my mates have got. So, yeah, stay tuned. Thanks for watching, guys. See you on the next one. Let's go.